Junch Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it is time for the 22nd edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, the series where I cluster together a bunch of albums and EPs that I didn't get time to talk about in a full video. As some of you might have already noticed, I've fallen extremely behind with my reviews this year. Even right now, I'm still trying to review albums that came out like months ago, and I'm going to kind of continue to do so until I feel like I've caught up and have said everything that I need to say. However, rapid fire reviews, at least in the history of my channel, has been a great way to kind of play catch up, talk about projects that I had little or no desire to do full videos on, and potentially turn you guys onto some projects that you may not have known about. I will say though, I had a really hard time motivating myself to make this video because my to-do list was 60 plus albums and EPs long, so rather than completely overwhelming myself and trying to get all of them covered in one shot, I've decided to split this up into two different videos. So rejoice, you guys will be getting another equally as long rapid fire review video sometime in November. But enough delay, let's get into the 22nd edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. I could have never seen this coming from Borgor, and I mean really, who could have predicted this project? Hilariously enough though, this EP is really great. This is certainly my favorite project to come out of the Kanye West Wyoming sessions that happened earlier in the summer. This album is pure psychedelic bliss and some of my favorite work that Kanye West has ever done. Kanye and Cudi have a lot of chemistry, the production is great, and the lyrics are captivating, I definitely suggest this one. Generally speaking, I think this is a pretty standard rock album. Really the main thing that sticks out to me here is Micah Martin's vocals, but I will say it is really cool to hear that voice found more in its natural element than surrounded by like a Kazo EDM banger. And for that reason alone, I'd say that this album is worth at least a listen. Yeah, this EP is pretty nutty. I'd say it's my favorite work that Wave Dash has put out thus far, and it's probably pretty up there for Quest as well. It's short and sweet, and it might be a little unsettling at times, but this EP bangs. While I am really glad to see Synchronize kind of back in the swing of things, I can't really say that this EP stuck out to me more than a lot of the duo's previous work. Definitely one of my favorite EPs of the year so far, just all around fantastic bass music. I'm not absolutely head over heels over every single song on this project, but even my least favorite songs on this EP I could still sing praises about. As I mentioned in my Julian Gray review, I was pretty underwhelmed with this EP. I think it's probably No Mana's most forgettable project. I thought Other Side was phenomenal, but other than that, there really wasn't a whole lot in this EP that stuck out to me. So a few years ago, back when Elephant was doing his electro and big room stuff, I feel like he had a sound that was really unique and made him stand out from a lot of his contemporaries. But as of recent, I don't feel like he stands out from the crowd that much, and I definitely feel that on this EP. Given that I normally enjoy this electro-funk style that Chromio is going for on this album, I surprisingly did not enjoy this album that much at all. And I think a big reason behind that is this album's grossly underwhelming vocals. Gotta say, I never expected Yellowclaw to get to a point in their career where they would be releasing a third studio album, and I guess that that in itself is impressive, but this album is not. It's just commercial barf. I would say that this is another one of my favorite EPs of the year, and even though Underscores seems to be drawing very clearly from three distinct influences on this EP, uh, Kanye, Lido, and Eden, I like this EP a lot nonetheless. He blends all of those influences together in a really distinct way, and even adds a little bit of his own personal flair to it, and I honestly felt really immersed into this EP's story too. This right here is an album that I've consistently had in rotation since I listened to it for the first time. While a lot of this retro mid-tempo style stuff tends to fly right by me, I felt like Brill's take on this style was really interesting and captivating. I think largely because it has a very different production stance, uh, featuring those big juicy Brills bass lines. This album to me kind of felt like a spiritual successor to Years and Years first album, but isn't really as fun, spunky, or memorable as Communion. Protoculture is a name that has pretty much always stuck out to me in the world of trance, but this album I feel is really a step up, like I'd 
I'd say this is my favorite trance album of the year so far. Another great EP from No Taker, and I feel like the story on this one is even more developed than it was on Genesis, so I'm really excited to see what No Taker is going to give us next. I can't really say anything critical about this album because every time I go to listen to it, I fall asleep within the first two tracks, uh, even if I don't happen to be tired when I go to listen to it, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'd just say that this album is really good at doing its job. This is another extremely relaxing album, though I feel like I could probably speak about this one a little more critically. Don't really have a lot of negative things to say about this album though. The compositions are beautiful and this might be my favorite Adam Tell project to date. Said the Skies debut album is another one that has surprisingly been in really heavy rotation for me throughout 2018. It's not really that clever, experimental, or innovative, but it's not really trying to be. It's just a really solid, feel-good electronic pop album. Nova is one that I really wanted to cover in a full review because I do feel like there is a lot to say about this one. In short, I'd say that this album had some pretty great cuts on it, and it is a really refreshing project given the current landscape of EDM, but given the bar that Arl Grime has set for himself on past projects, notably Void, I left Nova feeling pretty underwhelmed. This album didn't absolutely thrill me, but I will say it did captivate me more than a lot of industrial style dance music projects have in the last couple years, and it's certainly a step up from a lot of Golden Features previous work, so, you know, kudos to him. I'm just going to go ahead and suggest this one. Destinations Volume 1 is a very solid collection of drum and bass from some of my favorite producers in that vein of music, so just check it out. I can't say I felt that these two new EPs from Igloo Ghost were nearly as well executed as Neo Wax Bloom, though I do like the concept of these two EPs kind of running parallel to each other, kind of existing at the same time. I don't really feel that individually these EPs did enough to define the attributes of their respective characters. While there are some definite differences between Clear to May and Steel Mogu, I guess I just didn't feel that their characteristics were different enough to warrant having this separated into two projects. It could have worked just as easily as a singular album to me. Don't get me wrong, I didn't hate this album, but I will say it single-handedly made me realize how much I just don't care for the pop house scene right now. This album is just over-glorified elevator music. I don't really understand the hype around this guy. I mean, sure, this album's definitely got some jams on it, but outside that, I just don't see Pluko as being anything more than a run-of-the-mill, like, vibey, future-based producer. As a whole, I can't really say I cared about this EP all that much, but the title track is just fantastic. Like, if you're craving some OG Justice-style music, I would 100% suggest this track. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite project from Anki, but it did perk my interests a bit more than Circadian. I think he's still holding on to those Porter Robinson influences a little bit too heavily, to fully take off, but you know, he's definitely on his way, and I've gotta say, some of the electric guitar work on this album definitely made him stand out. It's actually kind of embarrassing how much I like this EP, but come on, it's Trap Meets Metalcore! On this EP, Leto has more or less returned to form, and I'd say it's for the better. This is some of my favorite work he's put out since everything. Absolutely cannot wait for the next thing that this IOU series brings. My good friend Tommy from The Wonky Angle suggests that I checked this one out, and I've gotta say, I was not disappointed. It's a strangely cohesive blend of rock, pop, electronic, and orchestral music, and though I don't think the orchestral arrangements thrilled me quite as much as Tidy and Christopher Tin's album, uh, I still think this album is quite worth a listen. I did not expect to enjoy this album as much as I did. This is like Justice's take on Daft Punk's Alive 2007, except it's a studio album rather than a live album. And I've gotta say, I was really impressed with how much of a seamless experience this album was. I appreciate this album now more in context with both parts being released. And sure, there are a lot of really cool things happening throughout the album's running length, but overall this one was kind of a drag to listen to. This is probably my favorite EP to release on Monster Cat this year thus far. I just about love every single track on this EP except maybe the intro, and I'd say really the only thing preventing this EP from being basically perfect in my mind is some weird distortion on Katie's voice in the song Voices, 
and the very fake sounding orchestral parts. If Coven was tracking a real orchestra on this project with someone like Christopher Tin handling the arrangements, this EP could be simply amazing. Can't say I get excited about Garage all that much, but I really, really enjoy this EP. Once again, one of my favorites on Monster Cat this year. It seems like everyone in the EDM industry either loves or hates this guy, and I'm honestly pretty in the middle about him. I think his remixes are generally his most unique productions, and I'd say after this EP that still rings pretty true. I guess just none of the tracks on this EP really stuck out to me that much. And lastly, I have got to give a shout out to this new Dylan Francis album. Though it's not really my cup of tea, I do have to give Dylan Francis a great degree of credit for creating an album that respects the roots of his genre. It's very tasteful, and I feel like it's something that artists these days should really be doing more often. And that concludes this 22nd edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. As always, if you guys want to check out any of these projects for yourself, I will have the Spotify links down for those uh, in the description. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did. I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you later. Peace.